My name is Brian Morris. I'm Professor Emeritus in the School of Medical Sciences at the University of Sydney. I'd like to give a brief overview of an article on circumcision rates in the United States and the implications of the American Academy of Pediatrics recent policy statement. This article will appear in Mayo Clinic Proceedings in an upcoming issue. So over the past decade there's been a rise in the prevalence of circumcision in the United States from 79% to 80.5%, that is two and a half percentage points. It's interesting that rates have risen in men, but what about infants? There have been reports over the last few years that the rates of circumcision have actually fallen in infants. So if you, if you look at the data from our calculations, you can see that the projected adult circumcision rate is considerably higher than that based on hospital discharge data. And if we just cut to 2010, the bottom line here, you'll see that the rate is projected to be 77.2%. So these are infants born in 2010. Hospital discharge data is around 58%, but the real rate of circumcision is actually going to be 77.2% once these uh, infants grow up and reach the older age groups. In this diagram, you can see this figure of 77%. And this diagram actually covers the past six decades. You can see that the peak of circumcision happened in the 1960s with a figure of 83%. And as a result, we've demonstrated that there has been a six percentage points fall in circumcision prevalence in the United States from the 1960s to the present time. So this has implications, particularly in view of the recent American Academy of Pediatrics policy statement, which now positively supports infant male circumcision, certainly for those families who want it, but it also recognises that some families are opposed for cultural reasons or whatever, so it's a bit of a mixed bag. Nevertheless, based on medical grounds alone, circumcision is strongly supported. We then carried out a risk-benefit analysis and added up all of the conditions that circumcision protects against. And we found that overall, the risk of not circumcising is quite considerable. One in two uncircumcised males will suffer a medical condition over their lifetime caused by retention of the foreskin. We then looked at the <coughs> risks of the circumcision procedure itself. And in fact, these added up to less than 0.5%, as indeed was reported by the American Academy of Pediatrics. We also found that circumcision had no adverse effect on sexual function, sensitivity or pleasure. So what are the take-home points from our article? Prevalence in men has risen to 81% in the past decade, and this rise is seen in white, black and Hispanic men. However, our analysis of data for infants corrected for various factors shows that these younger males today will grow up to give an overall circumcision prevalence that is 77%, which is indeed uh, slightly lower than the current rate in adults. One of the main reasons is the rise in the Hispanic group as a proportion of the overall population. Another reason is Medicaid defunding in 18 states. We've also found that the benefits exceed risks by over 100 to 1. Over their lifetime, half of uncircumcised males will suffer a medical condition caused by their foreskin. We've also looked at ethical and legal arguments and find that these support infant male circumcision because it would be unethical for a male not to be circumcised owing to the fact that this will increase his risk of an adverse medical condition and the fact that circumcision is such a safe procedure. So effectively, it's akin to vaccination. The American Academy of Pediatrics positive policy statement supports access and third party funding for circumcision. So on that basis, Medicaid certainly needs to re be restored. 
in the 18 states which is not available for the poor and steps need to be taken in general for circumcision rates to go up. The new policy and the data that I've described shows that there needs to be, just like vaccination, uh, public support and measures taken to promote and increase the rate of circumcision in the United States. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.